Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about those who feel discouraged inside of their spirit, who feel discouraged inside of their soul. Now, first and foremost, when you get into these states or these ways of being, it's important that you do not let the elevator of your mind go to your mouth because life and death is in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. And this is the trick of the enemy. When you are in these low positions, when you are in these low places in this spirit, when you feel like you are lacking faith, lacking strength, and you start speaking in your emotions, you start speaking out of your flesh, you start speaking out of your own mind with an emotion, you will begin to prophesy, to speak things that will wrap yourself up in more spiritual bondage. So a lot of the times it's important to refrain regardless of what the situation seems like, because a lot of the times the enemy will up the gas when you are in the correct position. And that's just the way it is, because because when you are moving uphill, it's going to be a lot more difficult than just walking on this uh, straight path. And the enemy will make you believe that, oh, if you just let go, if you just ease up, it's going to be easier, which is a lie from the enemy. Keep pressing on with wisdom and with understanding. It's important to prophesy and to speak the word of the Lord over yourself, even in those situations, because the Lord loves when you have faith, even when you shouldn't, even when it doesn't make sense and you still have faith faith, the Lord loves that because a lot of the time, you know, just like a teacher, when they're taking a test, they are silent. A lot of the times when the Lord is testing you or testing you in areas, he will be silent. So it's important to operate in those places, in those positions with wisdom. But a lot of the time with this discouragement, it could be for various different reasons. One is because the enemy will make you feel this way to diminish your calling, to diminish your hope, to diminish your voice to make you feel invisible and he will either have this inside of you or he could use your environment. People who should be supporting will not acknowledge. People who should be leading, who should be guiding, who should be feeding will be bitter, will be jealous or whatever it may be. Inside of this matrix, you have to understand the prince and the power of the air is Satan. He is the ruler of this world and he can pop into vessels and he can manipulate your environment to discourage you and that's why it's important to walk by faith and not by sight because sight is where the enemy is if you are feeling discouraged this is a lie from the enemy to diminish your hope to diminish your impact to diminish your voice and he could either impart this into you or he could impart this into your environment because he is the prince and the power and the ruler of this world to where if you are really moving properly in the spirit why could he not manipulate your environment to make you settle or to make you back off or to discourage you. Why wouldn't he utilize what he owns so you refrain from what the Lord has called you to do? Just keep persevering. Keep going. It is the anointing that breaks the yoke. So go into the secret place, thicken that spirit, get some strength and break that yoke of discouragement off your life and replace it with faith and walk by faith and not by sight because sight belongs to Satan. Sight is where the enemy is is these carnal things the lord is spiritual right it's faith it's not sight it's spirit it's not flesh it's his commands his will it's completely a different realm so it's important to operate in spirit and truth and to walk in spirit and to have faith in everything that the lord has said and everything that the lord has promised and everything that the lord is telling you and to walk into that direction regardless of whatever is happening you could be discouraged because it is an attack from the enemy to make you feel hopeless to make make you feel like you are nothing, to diminish your impact, to diminish your calling. He could also use the environment as well. It could be that. And also number two, now this needs discernment. A lot of the times the Lord will bring us to a screeching halt in the spirit to reel us into his presence, into his secret place, because it is much needed. A lot of the times we go to the secret place to intercede, to fatten up our spirits for new strength, for revelation and wisdom, for the things that are unknown. And and that's why we, you know, we pray in tongues. That also builds up the spirit. That could also break that yoke of discouragement. Um, but a lot of the times, you know, we do that uh, because we don't know what's in the future. The Lord goes ahead of us. So we pray. We Sometimes the Lord will call you into that place to prepare. 
the Lord will call you in that place to strengthen you or for various different reasons. And sometimes I don't want to technically say it'll be discouragement, but it'll be something that will stop your spirit and reel you into God's presence because he's trying to connect and he's trying to say something to you. But this usually has to do when you're doing something out of touch or sometimes the Lord just wants you in a season where you're in his presence. What I mean by doing things out of touch is, you know, a lot of the times on this walk, we can begin to idolize God's promises to where we go off the straight and narrow. We go out of God's sight and he will reel us back in out of love just so he can, you know, start to speak to us so we can establish that relationship so he becomes at the core. Because, you know, sometimes with the promises, we could idolize the promises and that's not what he wants. And this happens very frequently. Whoever is faithful with little will be faithful with much. So if God gives you a little bit of money and you're faithful with that and it multiplies and it multiplies and it multiplies, sometimes you could be walking away from God more into the world, more into pride, more into leaning on your own understanding and your own strength because you don't have this necessity for the Lord, this dependency. So when you get into that realm or when you get into that space, that territory, the Lord will diminish your resources. So you come back to the Lord. So the Lord is the rock. And then when he does bless you, uh, you are a great steward and you know how to uh, dish that out properly. Um, And that's really what he wants. And that's why it is a slow and a long process. Now for another promise, it could be with a spouse, for example, let's just say you get a spouse prematurely and you're spiritually immature and you, you don't have a great relationship with the Lord. You know, that spiritual maturity is lacking. You will dish all your problems. You will dish all your weight. You will cast all your burdens on that woman instead of the Lord. All your problems will go to that woman instead of the Lord. She will become your God because you will get all of your answers from that woman like it's some prophetic system and you put a coin in and you'll get the word of the Lord through her and you will idolize that or the love or whatever it may be. And that's why that process can take a long time and the Lord will reel you back because in the scriptures it says that a woman is a weaker vessel and as a man you need to have understanding and understanding is knowing that you know your emotions and all of that stuff that you're not operating in your mind will and emotions but you're operating in the spirit because if you cast too much weight you could destroy her or you could destroy yourself or destroy each other or whatever it may be or any other promise inside of the scriptures we can idolize and the lord hates idols and this is when he could bring discouragement or even ministry and social media a lot of people idolize that they will hear like a 50 50 word from the lord and they will have a cloudy veil but yet they will still go to social media to post because they want to be consistent and i know that i have done this myself because i read in the scriptures to be d diligent to sow your seed in the morning and all of these scriptures about work ethic to where sometimes you could idolize social media because you enjoy it to where you compromise the word of the lord due to please viewers to attract viewers to boost analytics or due to consistency you could be operating in the flesh and not the spirit or in a carnal nature and what do i mean by this i mean you know if you are so focused on moving forward on progressing you know you could get shaken in your emotions you could get shaken in your will to where you're not abiding or you're not listening to the lord's commandments you're not following how the lord wants you to act but you get shaken in the spirit but you still feel the need to post you still feel the need to uh be consistent maybe in a season you're angry you're shaken you're emotional and all of these things but since you idolize social media your first instinct is to give a word or is to preach about the lord or is to say something or maybe your wisdom is becoming corrupted because you're operating in the flesh in the mind will and emotions because you're not spending enough time with the lord you're too tapped into consistency of grinding forward running ahead to where you start dipping into that territory now there is times where you're going to go through spiritual warfare i um, mean you will be shaken up and you still will have to continue that's why you need to discern that you know there's a scripture that it says the wheat the seed it falls into the ground and it dies and it produces much fruit right the seed if it doesn't die it's not producing fruit the seed has to be buried in the ground and it has to die to produce fruit and this is what the lord wants a lot of the times we come to the end of promises and we're like when is this going to happen when is this going to pass and you lose faith you lose trust or you no know, you become discouraged with god and you drop you bury that seed you bury that promise that the lord has promised you and that that's where he wants you to be because when it's buried, you just go back to God because you need the Lord to where, you know, you're not idolizing those things. You're not clinging.
hanging. You're not hanging on. Those ain't your rocks. Those ain't your foundations. Those ain't what you're tying your hope around. Those ain't what you're idolizing. Yes, they're a benefit. Yes, you should still pray. Yes, you should still have vision. You should still be expectant. You should still war for those things, contend for those things. But the Lord should be first because when the Lord is first, when you get all of these things, when all of these things happen and the Lord is first, you will go always back to the Lord, never to those things. So the Lord preserves, the Lord protects. And a lot of the times he will discourage, he will stop, he will bring you to a screeching halt to bring clarity or to bring you back to the secret place to where you're reliant on him again. So it's a tactic by the Lord to reel you back into his presence, to correct you, to reproof you. Discouragement could be from a lot of different things. It could also be from sin, spiritual bondage. The wages of sin is death, spiritual death. And a lot of the times, if you are operating in your own carnal nature, your mind, will, and emotions, and you're doing things outside of the Lord, like if you idolize social media and you are giving 50-50 words because you want to be consistent, you want to just post content, you just want to do these things, and you do have a relationship with the Lord, but you're saying things that haven't been meditated upon, and maybe like with a, a prophetic approach, that could come with re proof correction from the Lord because it could be something that the Lord hasn't spoken or it could be something that sounds right but it's in your own mind will and emotions so the Lord just wants you with him and yes he wants you to be diligent yes he wants you to have these promises he wants you to work hard he wants you to be consistent but he wants you to do that with the backing of him because the Lord goes before you he is a lamp to your feet and he wants you to move on that straight path right not a path that is like this off course in course, off course, more trouble than necessary, more spiritual warfare. So it's important to, yes, be diligent. Yes, to be expectant of the promises. Yes, to be hopeful for all of these things, but to have that relationship with the Lord because that is the necessity. That is the main thing to have that overflow inside of you and move forward with his presence, with his wisdom, with his understanding, with his backing and all of those things. So a lot of the times, you know, the Lord could be screeching you to a halt. And a lot of the times the enemy could bring discouragement to diminish your calling, to diminish your voice, to diminish what you're doing. Like your actions aren't producing anything. This takes discernment. This takes wisdom. But if you just feel like I am right, I am correct with the Lord and this is still happening, you feel this discouragement. It is from the enemy to diminish your voice, to diminish your calling, to make it seem like your voice doesn't have a ripple effect, like it doesn't have impact and he could also use environment. And that's why it's important to walk by faith and not by sight because a lot of the times he could use the outside environment to make you settle on something you're not supposed to be settling on when God has promised you something else. So it's important to walk with wisdom and also discourage could come from just crisis fatigue. But this is another thing because, you know, if you are under the Lord's shadow, under his protection, under his peace that surpasses all understanding in his refuge, you would be more preserved spiritually because the Lord will preserve the righteous because this judgment that is on the lands is from the Lord. Let's not get it mixed up. And if you are with the Lord, you will be preserved because this judgment is from the Lord. Now, myself, I would always be like, you know, these bad things are from the enemy me, this comet, they call it the devil's comet. These natural disasters are from the enemy, this demonic stuff and all of that. We give the enemy power. But listen, this judgment is all from the Lord. Even the enemy's judgment is from the Lord. And the reason being is because in the heavens, there is a court system. We have a holy and just God who punishes the unjust and sinners. And he has the ability to heal lands. We see that in the scripture. And he has the ability to curse lands. And the enemy himself is just a curse. So I I see it in the heavens as, you know, they're looking down and casting all this crisis fatigue, all of this judgment. Sure, some of it is exaggerated by the media and it's just continual. That's why I highly promote not going on your phone in this moment, but really just being in the spirit, being with the Lord, not overfilling your system with all of the things that are taking place because it is, and you will probably experience crisis fatigue of wave after wave and become discouraged. It's important that you do keep up with the times, but also that you 
stay in the presence of the Lord. So you're not being manipulated. So you're not shrinking. So you're not taking wrong decisions. So you're not being locked in a box or doing something that the Lord hasn't commanded you to do. But you're doing it because you haven't guarded your eye gates and your ear gates. So stay in the presence of the Lord. And when it comes to your phone, you know, you will see a lot of exaggerated stuff from media that is exaggerated. Maybe some of it's not real. Maybe some of it is. But then you will actually see a lot of real things of judgment coming to pass. And the reason this is, is because, well, Jesus Christ is a holy, just God. He is loving. He wants his people to be abundant. He wants them to live life and more abundantly. Everything you could possibly imagine. But when it comes to a just God, he dishes out punishment for bloodshed, for wickedness, for perversion, for things that don't align with a just God because he is just. And when you rebel, whether it's in this world, there is consequences. When you commit a crime, even in this world, there is consequences. There is law and law is beautiful. Imagine this world without cops or without a court system. Now imagine this world without a God, right? And this stuff is spiritual. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities, spiritual wickedness in heavenly realms in the present darkness of this age, right? It's spiritual. Rebelling against God has its consequences because there's not a hedge of protection, whether it's on the land, whether it's on an individual, whether it's on the people, and there's no spiritual armor, there's no spiritual provision, there's no abundance to where when people begin to sin, when people begin to defile, when people begin to idol worship, like all of these crystals, all of this new age, what's new? More idols, more idols, more idols. In the court systems of heaven, it's like the enemy is going up there and saying, Father, like they have sinned against you. I'm not sure if he's saying, I don't know what he's saying, but he's saying they have sinned against you. Like I have legal rights to do what I do, which is steal, kill, and destroy to where the enemy gets access. We see with Job, the enemy couldn't go against Job because he had a hedge of protection around the Lord. And that could be with the land. That could be with us. That could be with people. And when that hedge of protection is taken away due to sin, like if Job sinned, which he didn't, he was tested, then the enemy could come in. So this is a judgment by the Lord, but also the enemy gets to usher in what he gets to usher in. But a majority of it is from the Lord. I, I'm sure the comments and I'm sure all of this stuff is the judgment of the Lord. And you know, the enemy is trying to say, well, that's yeah, that's me to gain power and influence, but it's not. But so there could be discouragement from crisis fatigue, but this is just a necessity of what needs to be paid for, for all of the things that were done. Like the scriptures say, if anyone causes my little one to stumble, it's better for them to have a millstone tied around their neck. And well, in the schools, they have, you know, trans genders trying to make these kids gay or trying to convert these kids trying to pervert these kids you know these perverts on these kids like it's just disgusting and you know these kids are God's children and God hates perversion in itself that's the reason Sodom and Gomorrah got taken out and even idol worship with all of this new age that got ushered into the land we see in the scriptures time and time again of judgment coming down on people who were doing idol worship and that's what the land was filled with and aborting millions millions and millions of children as well. Like, yes, there's judgment to pay for that. Like back in the day, it's literally old demons, but just 2023, 2024. And it's backed up with different media, propaganda, different lies to make it seem like that's the way to go. But back in the day, they were sacrificing babies to Molech and the Lord judged them for that. We did absolutely everything, right? It even says God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And we had this pride month where people were just in perversion, were in defilement, disgustingness, and they were just mocking God, acting like their own sovereign beings, shaking their fist at the Lord. Now, after all of that time, there is a price that needs to be paid. And in the scriptures, you know, it talks about places that, uh, seen the judgment, seen the wrath of God. And it is usually, you know, their mighty men die or fall by the sword. They fall in the streets, you know, pestilence, famine. There's just a lot of different things that people don't even read into. And that's why it's right to get with the Lord because a lot of the people, they want to be in their mind, will, and emotions. They want to be prideful and God resists the proud, but they want to be in this place because, you know, it feels like it's protected. It feels cozy. They like to act like everything's okay and they stick their head in the sand. And that's the worst place to be. Make sure that you are sticking your head 
into your prayer closet and connecting with the Lord. There could be discouragement from that of crisis fatigue, seeing all of these things that are coming. But it's important as the adversity rises up, the Lord wants his people to rise up. You know, he's expecting something from his people, right? Because we see in the scriptures, every time any man or woman of God stepped into their purpose, there was opposition to meet them, whether it was David against Goliath or Joseph who went into the pit to the palace or Daniel who was, you know, in the lion's den who came out. A lot of people rise up to their calling when there is that opposition. And you have been called for a time such as this to rise up. And I feel like the Lord wants his people to rise up, to combat it, to fight for the Lord. And on the other side of that, I really believe that the Lord will redeem America. I really believe that he will redeem Canada. And I really do believe that there will be redemption that he does want to save America, but it's going to come at a price. It's going to come at a cost. It's not going to be comfortable. And it's something to be learned from moving forward. So there could be discouragement from that. Could be discouragement from a lot of different things. And also there could be maybe just this overburden, this weight. Too much is given, much is required. And a lot of people, when they start to go on this incline, when God advances them, when God enhances their life, they get more opportunity. They have more influence. They have more that they have to tend to, to where it could feel burdensome. And a lot of people, they take that up as, well, I got to drop the Lord to feel okay. It's the Lord's fault that I'm feeling this way. And they cling on to those things in their own flesh and blood. But in reality, you got to dig in. You got to press into the Lord to get more strength, to get that anointing that breaks the yoke. So you can steward, so you can have the capacity, so you can handle these things that the Lord has given you. And some Sometimes, you know, when you are reaching, when you're expanding, when you're growing, when you have these opportunities, all of these things, you could feel like, I just got to walk away from the Lord because there's so much pressure. There's so much this, there's so much that, there's so much whatever it may be, resistance, attacks, this, that, and the third. But actually, you got to press into the Lord even more because the enemy is a liar. You know, he'll make it seem like it's easier when you walk away from the Lord and walk away from responsibility, which is just a lie from the pits of hell. It's important that you walk into the Lord so he can strengthen you, so he can give you that wisdom and that understanding and the things that may feel burdensome that you have uh, sowed seeds into you know sometimes uh, you just keep grinding you just keep holding on to in your own mind will and emotions and you won't take that time for the Lord because you feel like it's going to go somewhere so listen if you have sowed seeds in places you have sowed those seeds and they're going to be there for you the Lord will keep those seeds for you but sometimes you know to keep watering those seeds that are growing bigger you need more water you need more activation you need more strength you need a uh just a new perspective. Like you need something new. You need new wisdom. You need new understanding, which comes from the Lord. So sometimes if you feel overburdened, discouraged by all of the things and you feel like, you know, going elsewhere to run away from those responsibilities is the best option. No, running to the Lord um, and just going into that secret place so you can mount up with wings like eagles and, you know, f take full advantage of those things is the best thing. And, you know, honestly, when you feel that way, it's important to just go outside of the box. If prayer isn't working, you know, Go on walks, go in nature, have a campfire, you know, reserve some time for the Lord, read the scriptures, listen to worship music. A lot of the times when you're praying, sometimes it feels like it's not working because the enemy will battle you when you're praying. And when you're praying, you're praying for things in the future that are to come, right? You're praying for things in the future or you're praying against the things in the now. So a lot of the times the enemy will make it seem like nothing's really happening. And sometimes it, it doesn't spiritually help, which is a lot. Sometimes it feels like it's just the mind or it feels like it's just, it's not shaking it off, that feeling. So it's important to always keep prayer. Yes, it's vital. It's crucial. And I'm not saying to walk away from the Lord, but I'm saying if you're just only with the Lord in your prayer, it's time you take the Lord, you know, on walks, take the Lord to the campfire, you know, take the Lord in other locations uh, that feed your spirit as well. But yeah, there could be many different reasons why you do feel that way. But number one, the devil is a liar. Number two, 
just have discernment, have wisdom. Because a lot of the times, the Lord, he will have seasons where it's build, grow, sow, sow, build, grow. And then other seasons, it's serve, 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 serve. And then other seasons, it's in the secret place, fattening your spirit, getting that anointing that breaks the yoke, strengthening yourself, getting yourself wisdom, understanding, and all of these different things from the Lord. And, you know, interceding or praying for your future or praying for other people. Sometimes he will have to take you to a screeching halt to get to that place if you're over over busy if you're overthinking about other things or you're idolizing your ministry idolizing promises idolizing things that are outside or if you're in your mind will and emotions and you got knocked off track you know sometimes he could screech you to a halt to pull you back into that secret place so just discernment in the seasons uh, because discouragement could be a pulling into the secret place and it could also be from the enemy and both are very true so yeah just have discernment have wisdom and yeah so hopefully this helps you guys and i will see you guys in the next video peace praise my god oh praise the king the Prince of Peace.